Um, I'm now working at Watch Out, uh, which is a social enterprise. Um, uh, we, we the first project, uh, the the goal of our uh, of, of our company uh, is aiming at uh, lowering the barrier for citizens to uh, participate in politics. Uh, the first project of our, our company is uh, Congress Muso. Uh, the term, or I mean the, the name Muso uh, is a Japanese word which means warriors. Uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fun story because some congressmen in uh, the leg le legislative grand uh, in Taiwan, I mean the Congress, they really fight each other. So, so just like warriors. I, I mean really fight physically, truly. Yeah, what a shame, but, but it's true. Um, uh, we were, we're now uh, we're setting a platform uh, for the citizens to um, understand what is happening every day in the Congress. Uh, the transparency of the Congress in Taiwan is totally a disaster. Um, uh, we have an IVOD system. We spend about $40 million a year to maintain the system. Um, but the IVOD system just shut down all the time. And whenever there's a fight between the congressmen, the officers in uh, the Congress will uh, turn off the IVOD system themselves. So, so you can't see anything. You can see only a blue uh, image, totally blue image on the screen. So, so it's really weird. Uh, many, many uh, of the NGOs have been uh, working on this issue. Uh, they, they're trying to ask him for the uh, original video from the Congress, uh, but the Congress just refused to give them because they claim that uh, the v videos and voices uh, is part of the uh, intellectual property rights of the congressman. I mean, 智慧财产权。他们说是这些影像是智慧财产权。uh, so, so they just refuse it. Um, but many uh, citizens uh, and NGOs like G0V, uh, they are uploading uh, these videos to YouTube and without, regardless of the Congress threat. So, so that's where uh, we were doing recently. Um, Watch Out uh, is, is recently uh, trying to make the interactivity uh, more interesting between citizens and uh, the congressmen. So uh, we're, now up, uh, we're now trying to change um, our website uh, to a more interactive, uh, more, more inductive, and make uh, citizens and uh, can ask or a reply to the congressmen and ask their questions and we're asking for the Congress uh, the reply. Um, what we're doing now is still uh, have a long way to go. We've been working this um, for about, about one year, and this uh, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, is the anniversary of our company. So we've been just working for one year, and there's still a long way to go, and we really uh, need uh, everybody's help, and we also need some experience from our foreign friends. So that's that's my talk today. Thank you. Thank you. It's a very young but very active uh, program. So uh, they need more cooperation with other people so, or other organizations. So very good program. So I'm so old, you see. <laughs> I, I watch. I, I joined the uh, Congress Watch program 20 years ago. It's so sad. It's so uh, the Congress is still very bad. <laughs> so I, I, I'm very uh, glad that uh, so many young people uh, to have such watch program to uh, ask the reform of the Congress in Taiwan. Next, we, we will invite uh, Mr. Gao you know, the, the member of G0V 
to talk about his experience about to watch the Congress in Taiwan. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm CL. Um, so um, when we started GovZero, uh, the parliament-related information is one of the, the focus. And so we, we started to, to like open up a lot of the thing, pretty much like everyone here does, like the uh, Pompon and uh, Sunlight and the Sweet uh, Italian Italian thing. And by the way, um, so, by, by the way, we also have friends from the UK, from my society. They are the first uh, organization in the world that's using technology to track parliament thing. They have the first uh, parliament tracking website called whatdotheyknow.com. So pretty much we're doing the same thing in very different contexts, different countries, because the system is very different. And we kind of have to start over and, and everyone doing similar work. But there's very little sharing between uh, all of us. That's also one of the reasons why we want to bring everyone together and, uh, and see what we can learn from each other and even share stuff, right? So um, we built things like tracking uh, parliament business, like new uh, proposed laws and also posted on Twitter. And uh, we also uh, show like um, how, how, how much the, um, the, the parliament, the congressman or congresswoman are working did they vote or did they simply didn't turn up? Because they were on paper records and, and what we have Word file or PDF, but uh, some other projects in uh, GOP0 are trying to do the aggregated uh, information so we can display and then have a simple view for is, is this person actually doing his job? It, I, I guess it's test money, right? And so the project is also expanding very much like uh, sunlight turning uh, the federal level into uh, uh, state level as well because now the upcoming election is uh, the local election. So we also have a project doing the uh, local council member doing very similar tracking, like did, did the local council um, member turn up or a vote or propose a bill or something like that? And that's where the, the tricky part is because it's all different and some of the council simply have no record online, right? So, so we also try to do a survey on how well each local government are doing or local council are doing. And so I, I guess, once we put it online, it's like more accessible. People will see, okay, why is this particular county doing so poorly? Uh, so Miao Li has the worst uh, council uh, information online. It's pretty much nothing, right? And so uh, it's also interesting to, 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 to compare the transparency for, for local councils. Um, so I think this topic is a, is a little bit big when we talk about open parliament because it's not just the parliament business, but also the, the interest that the parliament members have and, and how, how they get their uh, campaign financed. So um, um, I don't know, it's, uh, it's a really big topic. And uh, the, the, uh, the information bit uh, that we focused on at the beginning is like focused on, on the parliament business only. So uh, we also did the, the bill tracking. So um, uh, you can actually see word by word like what each proposed amendment is. So we showed it in a very uh, comprehensive way like the most programmers are familiar with. So it was this version, now that version, and then highlight the differences. Um, so uh, we, we talk about that with a lot of the people around the world doing similar things that if we can reuse this kind of thing and, and turn out it's like, um, for example, in our, our parliament, we published the amendment in, in the form of co three columns. So original text, new text, and why is this changed, right? But like I think in, in Germany, um, the parliament document is like, okay, this proposed bill is changing the third paragraph, second word to uh, some other word. So it's like really semantically. So uh, so, um, um, so, so it's, it's like what I said, is like the system and how things work are so different around the world and, and we'll, we really need to find a way to see how we collaborate and, and share efforts around the world and because and, otherwise we'll be all spending time solving the same problem rather than progressing and, and uh, do some more interesting investigative work. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Maybe we invite uh, Alvarez, Mr. Alvarez from Chile to talk about more. <laughs> okay. Hello. Um, um, can you hear me from here? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Um, we have uh, we have a site over in Chile. Um, my organization has a site called uh, 
Congreso Abierto, which in, um, in English would mean opencongress.co. Um, .co. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, which is a, a, a way to provide um, easy access uh, Congress data for citizens, which is basically what uh, everyone else is doing, as well inspired by, um, by the guys over at my society. Um, because um, our government didn't, our, our, our Congress didn't have really much of open data, but it wasn't um, necessarily because of a, of a lack of political will. It was basically more about um, they didn't know what was needed by citizens, and they also, I think it was more about ignorance than, than just um, um, that they didn't, want to, they didn't want to have open data. Um, recently, I think it was a couple of years back, we joined um, the um, Open Government Partnership as well, and we are kind of into leading that as well. Um, so um, our organization is kind of like our advocacy group is doing a lot of things into the Open Partnership, um, Open Government Partnership. But um, I'd like to stress that one of the things that we th I think is very important for us is that we get a very good relationship with our government or we get a very good relationship with when some of our congressmen as well. So um, we do push for opening data, not just uh, doing technical things, but also doing advocacy in order to um, search for these transparency champions and um, um, put them into a, a, like a very um, well-seen position so they can be seen by other um, congressmen and they want to follow their, their, um, their track as well. So that has been our approach, I think. I don't know, what do you think of it? Okay, thank you. Uh, sure. uh, that worked? Great. Um, this is a lot of great things I'm hearing from everybody else that I'd like to respond to a little bit. And I, I think, um, start by following up on what Filippo was saying about the, the need to build good relationships with the politicians is, I think, vital because uh, you can build all the tools you want, but if you don't have the data, you, you actually can't. Um, and if you, if you don't have a good relationship with the government, you can't always get the data. I think uh, Lucy is showing that the, you know, the website sometimes just won't give you the data, or uh, in Taiwan, if they actually just shut down the website, that you know that is not <laughs> it's not going to help anybody. Um, and I think that we, if you, we found out that if you position it the right way and if you present sort of openness the right way, it's really hard for a lot of politicians to to say this is a bad thing, um, especially if you get if you can say that this is what your your citizens want, this is what the people that vote you into office want. Um, and we've had a lot of success going going and talking to members of Congress and other politicians um, and explaining that to them and then getting a very good reaction from them. Um, and I think uh, we've learned, and this extends, uh, we're working on the local level as well, um, and we've learned that sometimes um, in cities, it's, the government is smaller, there are less actors, there are less sort of things to deal with. So sometimes if you, if you go to a local city or uh, a town, they might have a lower level of technology or be, they might not have the best data, but if it's easier to get them to build good data because you only have to convince one person. You only have to convince 10 people, not a whole Congress or you know, a, a, a very large group. So we, we've had a lot of success, um, maybe not building the tools yet, but certainly getting uh, cities to be more open by just explaining to them, it's not that hard, we can help. We have tools that can help you and, and that's been useful, I think. Uh, the problem we have run into that you might be running into too, CL, is that a lot of times local local councils just don't have information. Uh, they don't track the votes. They don't track their meetings. They certainly don't have video uh, and that sort of thing. Um, and we have a, launched a project uh, that is sort of aiming to build out a standard for what, what local civic data looks like. Uh, and that's sort of the next step for us too is, is sort of how do you have something you can you can fit the data into that is actually useful um, and th that's been it's been an interesting experience i think for our developers that are working on that and trying to come up with that what that schema looks like um so it's definitely been one of our biggest challenges recently so okay thank you and
Um, yeah, actually, uh, in South Korea, we were we are also trying to become a bridge be between the citizens and the parliament. And um, well, actually, some of our friends, many of our friends, are telling us to send out report cards on the parliament uh, members and uh, give grades F to those that don't participate in the Congress. And um, uh, so they're, they're talking about sending out report cards and saying that that will be something that will give you a lot of traffic and that will give you a lot of media attention. And um, yeah, we, we thought of that, that that's a, the, probably the easy way to go. Um, but actually we're very careful in doing that because of our relationship with the parliament as well. Um, as Matthew also um, said, uh, we like the parliament to like us as much as the citizens like us because that's the only way that we can become a bridge in the future. Any question or comments from the pro? Yeah. Does this work? Okay, cool. All right. Uh, what our experience in Malaysia is. Uh, Turns out that technology is easy. Okay, that's arguable because we are three group of hackers. So people not so easy. Uh, we have resist uh, collaboration with different group have been limited due to skill set, culture, and sometimes the law. Uh, so do you have problem with this issue on culture, law, and that? Thank you. Anyone have, have answers? <laughs> okay. Um, so I'll briefly um, um, respond to the uh, the legal part because uh, I think uh, Dr. Liu Lin mentioned that uh, about the video rights here being uh, say um, the the congressman actually owns the right for the video and uh, you can't really like put it on YouTube but we did it anyway but we didn't actually get any threat actually but we started a copyright law here quite carefully saying there is an explicit exclusion for copyrightable material publicly. Uh, Public uh, political speech is not copyrightable here. So, well, the Congress video is streamed, so it's public. It is, is, is it political? Yes, it's the Congress, right? So it's not copyrightable. So we kind of try to walk around things and still like doing things legally and then keep a, a all right relation with, uh, like, I mean, in echoing to what uh, Dave, uh, our open kilo said this morning, we, we, we need to constantly remind ourselves what, what's our goal? If we want to change the parliament, make it more open, is it the most effective way to like antagonize them, or or is it we work around some way and then and then tell them, hey, this actually works easier for you, does your job better, or something like that. So um, yeah, just my brief response. Okay. Yes. So uh, I'm one of the guys here from my society, and I just want to encourage you because the story that you should know is that you can set an example which government eventually will follow. We've had tremendous success in the UK in the last few years of the government website has become very usable. And this is to some extent driven by the fact that people know when they're on a bad website now. The <laughs> citizens know when they're on a, a website which is worse than the one they used to buy their groceries or the one they, they used to um, look at pictures of cats or whatever. So, uh, and the other thing which, which happened for us, uh, like you, and most, I think it's true to say most people in the UK do not know who their representative is. So a very simple uh, tool which we made available early on was you put in your location postcode and we'll, it will tell you who your member of parliament is. Well now you can do that on the parliament website. And that hasn't happened by accident, that's happened because parliament sees that this is the right thing to do. So it, it really does work just as a method of example. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Oh, oh, you have a... uh, I'll just say that I think that the UK example is very powerful of the way that things spread, not just around individual countries, but around the world. Uh, the US federal government is, was sort of, I don't know if embarrassed is the right word, but encouraged by the steps the UK took uh, that like, really brought the UK's website forward and web presence forward. And the, the US has taken a lot of those things to heart. And 
I also would like, you know, people like Sunlight, my society certainly help out with that. Um, but I think that governments can help push other governments too. So, so it sort of works from the top and also all around. So. Yeah, thank you. Any questions over there? Yes. Uh, so now, after do this uh, to open the government and uh, build a lot of tools, uh, I think the next stage is like the Germans' apartment watch. They already put a lot of the congressmen to use the website to communicate with the people. In, uh, although in other countries, no matter in Korea or in Taiwan, already we already have all these applications, but uh, we don't have so much congressmen to use this application to communication. So no matter in Chile, in Korea, or America, how do you think to push them to use these uh, applications? Okay. Um, I, I think one of the um, key things is, is to, to promote uh, champions, as I said before. Like you say, this uh, congressman is using my application and he's getting He's, he's publishing it, like uh, publicizing it, like mm -hmm. telling uh, that he's using it in the papers or in the TV or somewhere else. And some other politician would want to use that application as well because it's popular. So you make that application popular with one of the, 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 um, the congressmen. And uh, I think that's a, good, that's a good option rather than, um, rather than trying to push them to use it, to promote it. Uh, I think also sometimes it's useful to engage with, with them where they do operate. So uh, I think Sunlight and also Popong uh, knows that a lot of our representatives are on Twitter. Uh, so, you know, we engage them via Twitter. <coughs> Obviously, you actually, like, mark them in, in Twitter when they, they introduce something. Um, so I think sometimes it's, if they like something that you didn't create, that's okay as long as you have a way to talk to them in, on the thing that they like. Um, so. Okay. Yeah, please. My first question is addressed to Sunlight Foundation, Matthew. Uh, since you have many applications and tools, and I guess you probably have many ideas keep coming to you that you want to work on. So how do you decide what's the next project you're going to work on? How do you prioritize these good ideas? And the other question is addressed for all. Um, the real intentions of the bills might not be as clear as it seems. They might have a um, nice uh, reason they put on the document, but uh, maybe they are just for their own interest, not for the public. So do you do anything to help people to from different um, area to share with their domain knowledge? in order to make the general public more aware of their real attentions. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so both great questions. Um, the first one, when Sunlight first started, we're about seven years old. I think the, uh, the strategy was uh, what our former boss used to call the uh, throwing spaghetti on the wall strategy, which is you, you, if you have an idea, you try to build it. Um, and that worked for a while, and, and some great tools came out of that. But now we operate a little bit more strategically. Uh, we do some development process to see if the idea we have is actually feasible, and then we, we go out and try to try to raise some money to actually build the thing. Um, so at the beginning, it was a little bit more, let's try it, and then through that, we figured out how to build tools that were successful, and then figured out how to be more strategic. Uh, the second question is fantastic and uh, a little bit harder, I think, for me to answer, but um, one thing that we do is we try to get we try to make the entire text of a bill easier to access. Uh, so we, we don't, it's a little bit more passive, but that's sort of, we do our best to get the, all of the information out there. Okay, thank you. No. Okay, any further, further questions? Maybe I would like to present two points. First of all, <laughs> I'm very glad to have so many young people to organize, to watch the Congress. But uh, we find that uh, all, almost data-oriented. We just set up data, we mine data, <laughs> or we have uh, the uh, information open to the public. But I think it's most important, more important is that uh,
to, to the microphone, uh, microphone is oh. not right. Okay, <laughs> That's, sorry. So now, uh, so many programs is uh, data oriented. Just try to dig uh, up the data or open the information. I think is we need more serious uh, social and political analysis and the criticism and the even the suggestions to how to reform the Congress based on data, not just to present data. Okay, I think that's a, a very uh, privilege to, to have uh, data opened, but the more uh, we have to do more, then can reform the Congress. The Congress, the second point is that Congress in the world is so bad, <laughs> okay? Every Congress is not, not good, okay? <laughs> In Taiwan and in Korea, it's very young Congress. Uh, they elected, for example, in Taiwan, they elected the second uh, Congress just in 1992. The first Congress is el was elected in, in Ch uh, China in 1948, okay? The second one is just elected in 1992, so very young. So they say have no f norm or no uh, good uh, 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 good behavior or performance of the, the Congress. And also Congress all, almost uh, easy to be corrupted. Always have uh, relations with money. Okay, the congressmen have money <laughs> with the whole total Congress. So we need uh, to, uh, to, to have a more uh, active, more, uh, uh, useful, more serious program to reform the Congress. In Chinese, ma yi han su, a small ant cannot shake the tree. The Congress is so big, so a big tree, but we are just ant. But we also say ma yi xiong bing. <laughs> so many ants can shake, not just shake, because the tree is in ill. So you can if we have enough or so many ants to work together, we can shake the tree. So we can reform the Congress. That's a hope. Oh, it depends on everyone, everyone's effort to, to, to reform the Congress. So it's time up. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the speaker here. And also thank you very much for your participation. So then I have an announcement that uh, in Chinese. Xiaowu the Meiti Puguang Xia the Xuyun Kaisi the Sujian Shi Idiam Shifen Idiam Shifen Naji the Jang Xuyun the Meiti Puguang Xia the Xuyun the next session is Idiam Shifen Hang Jiz Zeli Zan. Yes, it's the first time. Then the other time, the other time, the other time, the other time is Idiam Ban. 啊，不一样哈，大家要要听那个，要参加那个学运的哈，呃，曝媒体曝光下学运的讨论的，请在一点十分就到这里，呃，来参加。好，谢谢大家，谢谢大家 ，Thank you very much。Thank you。呃，跟大家补充一下，那个 Matt 和 Felipe， 还有呃海盗党的 Gregory 在礼拜。礼拜一的晚上，好像呃有一个活动，呃在在那个我们的共笔上面有，应该是在呃，对不起太累了，应该是在善导寺站那边，所以有兴趣的可以在这个我们的活动共笔上看到那个活动。So Matt and、uh, Philippe and、uh, Gregory from the Parapati International will have a two-hour forum、uh, Monday evening.、Um, the information is on our shared note.、Um, if you would like to attend, it would be、uh, somewhere near Taipei Main Station. Yeah, thank you.